when I came in, it was all over the place. I mean, players weren't really locked in together, I would say. Putting out five players and just going, going and hooping, basically. Um, it wasn't really any structure. I knew we had some, some talent here. It was, uh, it was about getting it all together. We just weren't having success on the on the court, and um, you know there's probably a lot of things that that played into that. Uh, but ultimately, we're in a business of accountability and results, and the results just weren't there. You know, following that season, we just felt that the timing uh, was needed for uh, you know a fresh start. This is home, and so this is such a big deal to me. Uh, you have no idea. Um, how much this means to me to have this opportunity. In the history of this program, uh, we had never went out and hired a sitting head coach from an NCAA Division I institution. And so I thought if we could find somebody who had been a sitting head coach, because this was a time and a place and a job where I just didn't feel like learning on the job uh, was something that we could afford to do right now. He's been a junior college head coach, won a national championship. He's been a Division II head coach, played in Elite Eights. He's been a Division I high major assistant at Baylor where they went to, to Elite Eights. And then he had a great first year there at Arkansas State, uh, one of the best regular seasons they've ever had. Well, the first part that I wanted to be clear about in the meeting, even when we met with the team, was that our expectation is we're going to play for championships. And I told them that I want people to laugh at us for the goals that we're going to have as a program and that our ultimate goal is we're going to play for a national championship. I don't want to win 15 games. Am I clear? I want to win a championship. So you got to go over the top if we're going to win a championship. He very much understands the development of the total person and who's honed in on what we provide in nutrition, what we provide in strength and conditioning, what we provide in academic resources. All of that feeds into winning and losing. You know, you start to see the guys respond, one, to his leadership style. It was a culture change. Like, I mean, we were doing things different ways. He had a lot of change that he wanted to implement on the court, in your, in your outside life. It's a culture established on accountability. It's one uh, that's established on being able to get people to push to their very best. Wanting you to be better than what you want for yourself, you have to meet, them, meet those standards in order to play for him. He demands excellence out of each and every practice, each and every game. Grant has a gift. I mean, he, he can come down on you hard and he can push you to limits that you never thought you could get to. And then on the flip side, he's loving on you. And you know, I think his ability to do that is a big reason why this program in such a short time has been able to, to make the turn that it has. I thought last year was interesting because we won some games early. With six seconds to Draper, fires a three, got it! With 3.4, 69-67. And then we went through a spot where we lost a lot of close games, just the execution wasn't there. And any time you have coaching change, it's difficult because you've got pieces you inherited, you've got new pieces you've tried to bring in, you're trying to mesh both. When we kind of got to the mid-season, you, you began to see that we could compete. We started playing good basketball and we started out the conference really well. And when we lost a lot of those close games, I think it took a toll on our team. I thought, you know, was it, you know, that was the page that was going to be turned. Coach McCaslin was really down about that because we had a good crowd. He was pretty disappointed that, we, that they weren't able to advance. He knew that a lot had went in and getting a conference tournament here in Frisco. And then we had the opportunity to play in the CBI and that was a credit to the university, honestly. He, he told me he thought we would benefit from that. He wanted to experiment with some lineup changes. And I wanted our team to play. I'm not so sure our team wanted to play. We really didn't know like what to expect because uh, we thought our season was over with. We were all like, I don't, I don't really know like how this is going to end up. He changed the way they were playing, gave them a little more freedom. Um, they played better defensively, they played better offensively. And I think that the team really took a step in terms of coming together, coaches and players, team chemistry, maturation, learning from mistakes, focusing on every play. Uh, they, they took a huge step forward in that CBI. I think the CBI tournament was where we really found ourselves and, you know, we came together. We were playing really good basketball. We just was out there just having fun and just hooping and able to win a championship. It's not Good Friday, it's Great Friday. The Mean Green have won the College Basketball Invitational. They are 20 and 18, and I want you to hear this crowd. Just getting that done was something that was really, really great for us. 
and on morale as a team. You maybe skip a whole year in terms of what it would have taken to capture that all around uh, by playing in that CBI. You, know, you operate in a way that you believe you're going to win and it happens. And this is just the beginning. a big springboard for our program and winning the CBI and going into this year knowing that our expectation is that we win and that you step onto the court with a different understanding of how you're going to do it, not necessarily just believing that you're going to do it. Words only mean so much, but when you see the evidence on the court, that's when you really buy in. And so they bought in. You know, going back to the summer and our trip to Italy and even the work this fall, I mean, you're seeing guys who are putting a lot of extra time in on their own. You win the CBI, but you want more. Outside of practice, we're all working on our game. We're all shooting after practice. We're shooting before practice. They understand the system. You've got you know a team right now with six players in double figures. Nobody cares about stats at the end of the night. The bench is excited when anybody's having success. We have a lot of good guys, you know, uh, we can get a little goofy at times, but when it's time to lock in, you know, we have guys pulling for each other. Bank scores counted in one. We're, we're definitely versatile. And our depth is, uh, I think, is our best strength right now. And their ability to, to play defense, play better offensively. We got people that can put the ball in the hole. Uh, we've had our up and downs. It's not like we're just clicking and everything's just running smooth. We, uh, you know, some guys don't play great some games and some people step up. Well, I mean, a 12 and one start, first time since 1952-53 season is, is an awesome accomplishment in that we haven't reached our potential yet. <laughs> we're playing good basketball. I wouldn't say great, because we do have times where, where we're a little off. One night someone doesn't have a great game, someone else steps up and plays great, and that's what North Texas basketball is supposed to be about, the, you know, a team effort and not just one person, and that's why we've had the success we've had. The expectations are even going to be even higher. Like, we're not, we're not playing for a CBI, we're playing for the NCAA tournament. So as we head into conference play, I feel like that we can compete for championships. And ultimately, Coach McCaslin is building a program that year in and year out will be um, fighting for the top three or four spots in this league. And so I, that's kind of what I expect to see as conference play develops. Seven, three, one, two, three,